Hi, it's Rich with Rich Bound Photography, Sacramento, California, and coming at you with a special edition for the uh, workshop tour of 2018. And I uh, really want to just do some of these videos for my attendees that are going to be preparing to come. And uh, the first workshops in February uh, 28th and March 1st. So I really want to just go over what we're going to be using as far as equipment. And uh, obviously you have what you have and I have what I have. And I think we can do some overlap, but I just want to go over with you what we should expect and should really be thinking about. So obviously we're going to have a camera and a tripod and a lens. Well, this is um, what I choose to use uh, some of the time. Now I'm filming you, filming me, with my Sony a6000 mirrorless little crop sensor with a 12 millimeter um, Samyang lens. And now this is the uh, camera I'm going to be doing a lot of work with at the, at, the, uh, at the workshop and it's a great little camera inexpensive I think I paid 350 for the body the a6000 body I got an open box at Best Buy and the lens was uh, $319 and it's actually now I see it for $299 so that just shows you you can go really inexpensive or you can go like this Nikon D750 with the 19 millimeter tilt shift lens. Body is uh, new, this was $2,200, it's quite a bit less now, but um, the lens is $3,400. So it's kind of the other side of it, uh, about $500 there and about uh, $4,000, uh, almost $5,000 here. Are you gonna see any difference in Twilight? I mean, in Twilight. In uh, real estate photography? Well, I don't really think so. So it's really up to you. But don't feel you have to use a full frame camera and a tilt shift lens. You can get by with a crop sensor, inexpensive mirrorless, and a 12 millimeter Samyang lens. Actually, I'll be showing you the advantages to both, but the real advantage is to the Sony. So anyway, and I'm actually using it because the uh, video quality is great from it. I'm not trying to sell Sony. I'm just trying to sell you on you don't have to have this or that. You can have a Canon camera too. Anyway, um, I now have this camera is on a tripod and you need to come with a tripod. I'm actually going to cover this baby up because as you can see this lens is very, very precarious. And you're going to get to try this lens, and you're going to get to try my, uh, let me pull it out here, my 24 millimeter tilt shift. So I've got those. And whether you're Canon or Nikon or Sony, you're going to see the tilt shift, and you'll understand why we use them. So let's just talk a minute about, we've got our cameras, and whatever camera you've got is going to be great. Please bring your manual with you. And there are going to be some things that always come up at workshops. I'm going to want you to set your camera a certain way and you're not going to know the settings. So really best to have your manual with you. So that's kind of a prerequisite. Okay, tripod. I happen to have a big, burly, sturdy tripod. Um, I'll tell you all about this tripod, the Manfrotto 3046. It's not everybody's cup of tea because it is heavy and it goes to seven feet but one thing it does have is it has a geared center column so i can raise it up or raise it down to exactly where i want it and i really like that ability i'm filming on a more traditional tripod uh, although this is a traditional old tripod but you can still buy them on ebay and if you want or are so inclined to check this tripod out after the workshop you see me and you like it you try it you you see the benefits of it, you can always go order one on Craig's on uh, eBay, 3046, man, Frodo 3046. So I really like this. I like the way that the legs just go really in and out super fast, and they open up in the same together, so you don't have to open each leg up separately. To me, that's very important. But the most important thing is this is extremely sturdy and heavy, and I want a sturdy and heavy setup. I rarely have to adjust my verticals because of movement. 
Okay, the next thing is a head. So we've got, we want you to have a good tripod. If you're worried about your tripod and you think it may not be beneficial for the workshop, contact me or with any of your equipment, contact me and we'll go over it. I'm happy to talk to you for a few minutes and see if you can maybe get something better for the workshop, which will help you out better for real estate, real estate photography. Okay, so we've got the tripod and you can use any tripod you want. But again, don't use a cheap tripod, use a good one. Next, it's gonna be a head. And I've got this head on my, uh, my tripod and it's called the Arca Swiss D4. And what a D4 is, it's a uh, very expensive. Uh, this is all together about $1,100, so it's not cheap. But we really recommend in this, it's in this type of work to have a geared head, which I can adjust my movements very, very precisely. And I can move all of these on this particular head. I can unlock it so it can move swivel. And then once I lock it, I can move it specific little increments. The other way I can lock, unlock it too. And, and I can do this way or I have to unlock them both. I can do like a ball head and then just tighten it up and then do incremental smaller adjustments this way. Really important for our type of photography because when you're doing this type of really, really intricate photography, um, a geared head is always going to be your best bet. Uh, there are probably is very, very few, if any, photographers that have gone from a ball head to a geared head and have decided to go back to a ball head. We all realize the benefits. There are many types of geared heads, not too many, but many. Uh, one is the Manfrotto 410, which is about 275. I've got downstairs a Manfrotto 405, which is bigger, which I'll have at the workshop, which is about $500. I bought them used though. I found them used on Craigslist, so I got them much cheaper. And then I got this D4 head, so I can show you the benefits to each of them, and you can make up your own decision. The only bottom line is it's good to have a good sturdy tripod and a good sturdy head. We work with these all day, and tripods and heads are a good way to, a good place for you to spend your money and get something really good because it will last you pretty much the life of your equipment. Unlike a camera will get replaced, a lens might no, nah, these lenses are going to last me a long time. But lights will be uh, replaced fairly quickly and uh, with something newer and better. Tripods, this is tripod, it's been around since the 80s, 1980s that is, not 1880s. Anyway, I think it's uh, very good. Um, the other thing I have on my um, tripod is called a, this is a clamp. Now on my clamp, I need to have a bubble level and I'll show you demonstrations of why having a bubble level is so important. It's really, really important to have um, so you can balance your camera, you can level your camera and get your verticals right in camera. Uh, I don't like to use a bubble level on the top of the camera. I don't like to use the in camera level. Um, don't use that. I don't even look through my camera because I'm always tethered. Um, a hundred percent of the time I'm going to get into tethering in a minute, but really basically I recommend whatever clamp you get, get one with a bubble level. And for this Arca, D, this Arca D4, Arca Swiss D4, I went and uh, purchased the, uh, I put another really right stuff lever clamp with a bubble level on it. Now I can also put this clamp on my Manfrotto or any, anything I'm shooting. When you come to this workshop, if you're coming with a ball head, you're fine to bring your ball head with, a, with or without a bubble level, but I will show you why you want a bubble level and why you don't want a ball head, why you really want to do a, a geared head. But it is a big expense, so you may want to check it out for the workshop, and then you can make up your mind on a tripod, a head, and a clamp. So we've got that going on, and I'm just going to stick my... Um, camera back on. And the other thing too is I have a clamp. Obviously we all have 
a plate down here to attach to our tripod. Something or other, you gotta have something to attach. I always have an L bracket attached. And people ask me, many people ask, why do you need an L bracket? Or an L plate, they call it also. This is a really right stuff one, and I like this because it's just really smooth. Uh, I also have plates by Hanar. Um, Hanar uh, is a company that makes specific uh, more modifications to uh, things, and I'll bring some of those at the uh, workshop. I also have discount codes for uh, several things, so let's talk at the workshop. The L bracket not only allows you to, let's say I'm shooting this way, and I have set up my camera there, and I don't want to have to move it all the way over to, like, here to, hold on a second, if I wanted to bring it down to the side to shoot it in portrait orientation, I don't want to play with moving the head or the clamp at all. What I want to do is set up level, and if I want to do a vertical shot, a portrait orientation, all I have to do is swap it this way, and it's so simple and easy. I don't have to adjust my tripod at all. Really get an L bracket, learn to use it. The other thing too is, if I flop this over to be um, in portrait orientation, it would bring it way over here. And sometimes I don't have the room, and if I'm in the bathroom, and a lot of times I do my vertical shots in a toilet, <laughs> in the toilet in the bathroom, that is. And uh, I don't have the room to move it over because there's a wall there. So really simple. All I'd say is learn, and I'll show you at the workshop, about an L bracket. So the next thing I'm going to show you here is let's start dealing with lights. Now, I'm telling everybody, and I put this into my original welcome little uh, introduction to the workshops, I want everybody to know that we have limited space on any workshop. We're going to have 10 people, 10 students, and two instructors on this first workshop, me mainly, and we're going to have my assistant, um, Sharon, on the uh, other end of it. So we got 12 people in this house. Now, I want you to know that that's plenty of room, but we're only going to ask that you bring one light stand, okay? And this light stand is all you're going to have besides your camera, tripod, and light stand. So, you can put any type of light you want on a light stand. I'm going to go over that in a second. But what I'm saying is just don't bring two light stands. It's just a little too much to be dealing with. But an alternative is you can zip tie a flash pouch to your leg of your tripod or carry it with you and you can carry just a speed light. I put a speed light right here so I always have it there. So all I need is one light on a stand and a speed light for here if I need a second light. And I'll show you how to do that. Now if you just bring your flash pouch that came with your flash I'll bring some zip ties to the workshop and I'll help you zip tie it to the leg of your tripod or we can figure out another way of holding it. But uh, the good thing is that you just want it to be able to put it somewhere. So we've got that. We've got the one light. So let's start with we've got one light possibly going in your tripod leg or in your pocket, whatever. So that's the second light. The main light, and you can just come with one light if you want, and you can use a speed light. Okay, you can use a, everybody's going with these new um, Flashpoint and, or Godox. Flashpoint and Godox are the same. So when I say Godox or Flashpoint, it's exactly the same thing. Just different branding, different name. So this is a 200 and this is going to be about three times more powerful than this. Okay, so this is 200 watt seconds. This is hard to say because they rate speed lights differently. Uh, they go by guide numbers, but this is roughly about 70 watts. So uh, roughly two, two and a half times more powerful. So a lot of people are using these. The other thing too is you can even have one of these in your pouch and then you can put the other one on your light stand. And let's talk for a second. How are you going to get your light stand? How are you going to get your lights on your light stand? Well, a lot of times things come with them. There are many, many ways to do this. But what I really recommend, and I've done videos on this, you can find them, is I personally, on my light stand, like this, and all light stands tend to have a knuckle on the end, just like this, 
And then what I do is I use a typical umbe umbrella bracket right here where you can put the umbrella through it, but I rarely use umbrellas for uh, real estate photography, but we will be using them on this workshop so I can show you. And this just goes on top of your any light stand. And then I buy this Manfrotto connector. It's a Manfrotto quick release. And then I screw in the female or the male part here. I screw this directly into my lights. I also have one for my speed light. I put a cold shoe on here and I can show you all these things when we have our workshop, but you may want to look for this stuff and I'll put the, the information in the show notes. These connectors run about $20, I'd say, but boy, I'll tell you something. Let me just put this in here and I'll tell you, if you were ever going to invest in something, I put this little quick release clamp here and this piece, I'll just do a speed light because everybody uses speed lights. That's a regular cold shoe here attached to the plate speed light, the uh, quick release plate, and it just goes in like this. Wait, let me turn it the right way. Okay, and it's perfect. I can put it out here, put it over there, and let me tell you from experience, if you don't use some kind of quick release and you just tighten up your, your flash on your cold shoe every day, you're going to lose it sometime. So this is so nice to, it's cocked back. All you have to do is put it in here and it's always sturdy. I've never broken a flash, never dropped a flash ever since I went to the system. And I have these plates on every light. I have them on my 360 right here. So we can go over the details of putting these on. But uh, if you were thinking about it, I would find out, a, um, you can look at the show notes and then I would say to definitely find these quick releases. So we can have uh, one speed light in your, uh, by your camera, or you can put your 200 by your camera, and you can put a speed light on your one stand, or if you want to go a little bit bigger, go to the 200, which we have to turn this way. So we've got that, and I can also do light on a stick with my 200, and I really like the way these, um, this quick release plate is just so low profile, really, really swift and works. Okay, so we have this light set up, or if you have a 360, and I know a couple of you are coming to every workshop with a 360, I have got this, I've replaced the cold shoe, or the hot shoe on the 360 with the other base, it comes with another base, and what you want to do here, let's just put this back up like this. Okay, we've got it cocked open. I just put it in here really quickly and it's there. I can now put my light here and I've got my 360. I can go light on a stick, move it around, and I don't worry that it's loose or something because again, this quick release is a super, super sturdy, quick, Thing. If you needed to rotate it, you can rotate it here with your umbrella bracket. You can also put your umbrella in here and you don't really need to have anything else. You don't have to have an umbrella going through the 360. Just put it through your bracket. So that works really, really well. The next thing I want to say is everybody that's got a 360 realizes they've got a battery. So that's one of the downsides to the 360, although it is still my favorite light and I have just got a bracket. I've been using these for years with my quantum lights and basically it's your little adapter here. You can buy these as cheap as I think nine dollars or something. Uh, they go expensive or cheap. You can find them on Anorama and you just screw it onto your light stand and then let me do it this way. It's got a little bracket here for this bracket on the battery for the 360. And it goes right there and it really keeps it from really flopping around. It flops around a little bit, but don't worry about that. So we've taken care of, this is like a big setup. Don't bring anything bigger than a 360. No need to bring a 600, no need to bring alien bees, no need to bring anything that needs a cable to the wall. <gasps> Excuse me, cable to the wall. Battery operated, self-contained, so either a speed light, any speed light of your choice, but 
Be sure they walk, work together and talk together before the workshop, which I'll talk to you in a second when I pull out a trigger. But you can bring a speed light or two, put it in your tripod pocket or your pants pocket. You can have a 200, same thing, put it on a stand, whatever you want, or you can have a 360. But a 360 is the biggest we really want for this, and you shouldn't need anything bigger. I'm gonna teach you ways of um, doing what you can with what you got. And you can always use more power, but we'll have my stuff to play with. I'll have 600s for you to see and to play with in another 360 so you can see and play with. Okay, so we've got the lights going on now, but we want to do uh, one more thing we're going to need is the trigger. Now, I've got the new trigger. Ooh la la. I am so, so excited. Hold on, let me find my other trigger. I uh, don't have it with me, but basically um, it was uh, an XT32, which is Godox for R232, anyway, number, 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 number. But we have to have a trigger on our camera, and what I suggest to everybody is I'm using this Godox system, the uh, Flashpoint Godox system, and everything will talk to each other. I can remotely adjust my power. I can do it on the camera. I can remote it, remotely adjust with a trigger on my camera. I can remotely adjust the lights. Let me get rid of this call. And I can um, remotely adjust all my lights. And when you see it working together at the workshop, if you haven't used this kind of stuff, you gotta come with this kind of stuff though. You're gonna have to have a remote trigger for this workshop and you have to have remote lights that work together. Now I know one of my students is going to come with radio poppers, that's fine. People use pocket wizards, but now everybody's using these built-in triggers and lights because we don't have to have plugged in uh, receivers and things like that. So this is the new Flashpoint. Uh, I think it's called the RT32, oh no, it's the XT Pro. <laughs> Got so many numbers. Um, so this is the newest version and I'm going to go over with you why um, I think this is the latest and greatest. Super easy to use. So if you're going to get something new for the workshop, you got to make sure it's connected and working before you get on that airplane to come out. Can't impress upon it enough. You can't show up the day of with not understanding your trigger and your light. You can't come not understanding your camera and how to shoot in manual. We do not shoot in aperture priority. We only shoot in manual. No auto light, no auto photography. No, we have to have triggers and we have to have remote lights. So those three things are mandatory for this workshop. Now, this is great because it just talks to each other. Um, and if you've got a Nikon light, um, you've got to have a wireless trigger because you cannot use the CLS creative lighting system with Nikon to optically trigger your lights because everybody's going to be setting your lights off. So mandatory, you have to have a wireless trigger and wireless lights so you can get your own channel and connect everything and make it work together. If you have any questions, write email me, call me, just let's get this all taken care of and get everything working together before you get on that plane. So I'm just letting you know that this is going to be the best learning experience for you. I thank you so much for entrusting me, Rich Baum, with your education because I take it very seriously. This workshop is made for you. It's made for the real estate photographer. We're focusing on the things that we need to focus on and we can also talk about all the other stuff, business, about luxury homes, about where do we go with our careers. But right now I want to get you guys going with your lighting, with your composition, with your tricks and getting shooting big rooms and shooting very difficult rooms and learning some tricks and just putting all the things that I put out there in my workshop, in my uh, videos, I want you to just put it together so you're going to be really all together and know exactly what you need to do. So this is Rich with Rich Bomb Photography saying have a great time again. Reach out if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing you in February. Bye.